genioplasty. Now that all of us are experts on orthogonathic surgery and BSSO from our previous video, let us have a little quiz. Have a look at these characters. Besides being some of our favourites, what is a unique trait they have in common? Think like an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. Think from the perspective of orthogonathic surgery. Direct your attention to their chins. Notice how each of them presents with distinct features or concerns related to their chin. Today's video is all about chins and their role in orthogonathic surgery. In this video, we will discuss the definition, the types and complications of chin surgery or genioplasty. The term genioplasty comes from two Greek words, genio meaning chin and plasty meaning molding. Genioplasty, also referred to as mentoplasty, is a surgical method employed to modify the size, shape, position and projection of the bony chin, along with corresponding adjustments to the nearby soft tissues. This surgical procedure is frequently undertaken in conjunction with other orthokinetic procedures. To understand the types of genioplasty, we must consider the deformities of the chin in all three planes. These three planes are anteroposterior, vertical, and transverse planes. A genioplasty can be used to augment, reduce, lengthen, or straighten a chin. Therefore, the types of genioplasty include augmentation of genioplasty for anteroposterior deformities, reduction genioplasty for both anteroposterior and vertical deformities. Lengthening genioplasty for vertical deformities and straightening genioplasty for transverse deformities or facial asymmetry. Let us reimagine our cartoon characters into very real life situations. Imagine four patients patient A, patient B, patient C, and patient D, all having these chin deformities and needing correction. Before jumping into surgery, certain pre-operative investigations have to be done. These include radiographs like OPG, lateral cephalogram, radiographic analysis like COGS or cephalometrics for orthogonathic surgery are specifically performed. A PA cephalogram is done in cases of facial asymmetry. We also use something called visual treatment objective, that is VTO or surgical treatment objective or STO. This is done with software that enables us to predict post-treatment outcomes and also for patient information. There are certain basic steps to genioplasty. First, a vestibular incision is given. Next, we dissect the soft tissue and muscles like the mentalis and sometimes the digastric muscle. Next, the osteotomy cuts are given 5 to 6 mm below the apices of the canine and below the mental foramen on either side. This is done using a surgical saw or bone cutting burrs. Then the lingual periosteal attachment is preserved to maintain the vascular supply. Next, the fragmented segment is moved in the desired position with or without the bone grafts. Finally, fixation is usually done with bony plates and screws. Have a look at patient A. To improve his appearance, what would you do? Would you push his chin further back? Or would you try to bring it forward? Yes! In this case, we will augment his chin with what is known as augmentation genioplasty. It is used to increase the projection of the chin. How much can the projection of the chin increase? The normal anterior posterior dimension of the chin is 8 to 12 millimeters. This same amount of advancement can be done. If there is difficulty in advancement, a double sliding genioplasty can be done or grafts can be placed. Now let us take a look at patient B. How do you want to help her? Since her vertical facial height is quite less, we would like to increase or lengthen it. This can be done with lengthening genioplasty. Following a horizontal osteotomy, the segmented bone is pushed downward and bone grafting is performed to augment the height. Have a look at patient C. How would you improve his appearance? Yes, in this case, you would like to reduce the projection of his chin. 
This is done with the help of reduction genioplasty. The symphysis region can undergo reduction in both the anterior posterior and vertical planes based on the patient's needs. This surgical approach is often used as an adjunctive procedure. There are three types of procedures. The first one is a horizontal osteotomy and setback. After the horizontal osteotomy, as described in the previous procedure, the excess bone is removed and the fragment is fixed. The second type is vertical reduction. The needed vertical movement is determined. Two horizontal osteotomy cuts are made with the lower cut completed first. Then the superior cut is done and a bony wedge is removed. The inferior segment is pushed upwards and stabilized. The third type is vertical reduction and posterior setback. In certain cases, both vertical reduction and a posterior setback may be necessary. Finally, we come to patient D. How will you treat the asymmetry of the face? This can be done with the help of straightening genioplasty. This procedure is recommended for patients with facial asymmetry, particularly when full correction cannot be attained through jaw osteotomies alone. These asymmetries can be seen in cases of condylar hyperplasia or TMJ ankylosis. It is used to correct the facial asymmetry seen in relation to these pathologies. This asymmetry can be corrected through various procedures. In some cases, an osteotomy may not be even required for increasing the chin prominence. But how is that possible? The chin deformities may be altered using alloplastic materials. Tunneling is done in the bone and a pocket is created. In this pocket, alloplastic materials such as silicone can be placed. Pop quiz During the genioplasty, the mentalis muscle is stripped before the osteotomy. The mentalis muscle is a paired central muscle situated at the tip of the chin. It originates from the mentum of the mandible and inserts into the soft tissue of the chin. It is also known as the pouting muscle due to it raising the lower lip and causing chin wrinkles. After surgery, if the mentalis muscle is not sutured properly, it results in ptosis or drooping of the chin. This is known as a witch chin deformity. Complications associated with this procedure may include direct nerve injury can cause chronic neurosensory changes. The mobilized bone segment may experience excessive resorption or avascular necrosis. Rarely, hemorrhage and airway compromise may occur. Resorption of bone under alloplastic materials can occur. Teeth may become non-vital due to compromised pulpal blood flow. To prevent this, it is recommended to carry out osteotomies at least 5 mm below the longest tooth root. Summary Definition Genioplasty Types Augmentation Reduction Straightening Lengthening Alloplastic Complications Neurosensory changes Bone resorption or avascular necrosis Hemorrhage Airway obstruction Non-vital teeth Witch chin deformity With that, we come to the end of this video. We hope this video simplified the topic of orthogonathic surgery for you. See you in the next video.